Hello and welcome back to the channel and today I'm doing something a little bit different, something that I haven't done for a very long time and that is do an unboxing. Now this, as you know, as you can clearly see, I am very much into my royal replica jewellery. I'm wearing today the Canadian maple leaf brooch which uh, famously Queen Elizabeth used to wear, the late Queen and I'm wearing late Queen's Japanese choker which now Catherine has the Princess of Wales. So I thought that it would be time to order some new replica royal jewels and I was surprised to find that they actually now manufacture some of my favourite royal tiaras. So without further ado, I haven't looked, I've opened, I pre-opened this box because it was packaged really well with all this sellotape but I haven't taken a peek inside. Now I'm expecting, this is how they've this is how they've come. Now I'm expecting really good things from these. I'm hoping they are not damaged in any way, shape or form. Uh, I'm just, this is just a case of digging in. I mean, literally, this is what I can see. <laughs> My goodness. So let's just get started. I'm going to try and dig in. Wow. Okay. So I do have my trusty scissors. Now I'm glad they've actually come in boxes because I was looking for some um, tiara boxes, some storage boxes for my existing uh, tiaras and uh, these would kind of be perfect. So let's just get into it and see. Now I have no idea what's going to be in this one. Uh, so I'm just very excited. What's it going to be? Ooh. <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay, wow. Oh, now it's come in a little little uh, package case. Now, okay. Oh, before I even undo it, can you tell what that is? Oh my goodness. Oh, it's the honeysuckle tiara. Now, I can't see any loose stones, so that's a good start. That's a really good start. This is the honeysuckle tiara. Now, let me just snip the bag and get into it. I don't want to pull at it and make it go wrong. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh. oh my goodness, look at this. This is the honeysuckle tiara. Now, what I normally do is I normally put a piece of elastic on the back just to make sure that it stays on short hair. Uh, but if you have longer hair, it might not be so bad. But just look at this. Oh, that is amazing. I can just, oh, I can't wait. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow, my God, that looks so fantastic. Now, so this was one of Queen Mary's creations. Now, Queen Mary was a magpie. She was a royal magpie. She loved jewellery. She loved going to people's homes and you know pointing out things that she liked and she would expect them to be gifted. She spent a lot of time getting a lot of the royal family jewels back that may have been sold um, or given away over the years. So this tiara was made by E. Wolf and Company on a commission from Garrard, the jewellers. They also made several other tiaras for the family, including the Cambridge Lovers Knot tiara. Uh, so this is of the same kind of provenance. The original version of the Honeysuckle tiara, completed in early 1914, featured a taller central element. Mary later had it shortened to its current iteration. The tiara also used some recycled royal diamonds taken from the County of Surrey tiara, which had been dismantled and also used in the remodelling of the Girls of Great Britain and Ireland tiara. Now, I also have uh, a replica of that one, but there we go. I just absolutely love this piece um, and I can't wait to wear it in a royal video. So I'm going to pop that back in its box, remove all the, all the bits and bobs, and I'm going to pop that back there. Okay. I might actually keep the um, the plastic as a bit of support for it in there. Okay, so that's that's that one, all nice and done. Now let's get another one out. What will it be? <gasps> I'm just so excited. I haven't had any new ones for for such a long time, so this is a really nice treat for me. Right, what's it going to be? Ah, <gasps> oh. ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's have a look. <gasps> ooh, yes. Now this is another, another one that you don't see often, but when you do, it really, really is dazzling. This is the replica of the Meander tiara. Now this one 
is in Princess Anne's collection. Uh, I think Zara wore it for her wedding day. So I'll pop up some photos. Let's see if I can remove this cap. Like I say, they all need um, some elastic putting on just to make sure they are extra safe and secure on the head. But isn't it gorgeous? Just imagine the real version of this. I mean, incredible. So again, it's not one of the sort of biggest of stature tiaras, but one on the head quite high up. That is actually... Um, really really nice now sometimes what i do to kind of resize them if you need to you can bend these out very very carefully so depending upon where you wear it i mean on me my hair is quite tall but i quite i quite like it sort of sticking up a bit like that so that you can kind of see it above my hair i think that looks really really good princess andrew's meander tiara so most of the tiaras in the british royal collection arrived in Windsor hands through members of Queen Elizabeth II's family, especially Queen Alexandra, Queen Mary and the Queen Mum. But today's Mountbatten Windsors trace half of their royal heritage to Greece. And this piece, the Meander Tiara that belonged to Prince Philip's mother, is a part of that legacy. So the term Meander is another word for the Greek key design. No one seems to know precisely when Princess Andrew, who was born Princess Alice of Battenberg, acquired the tiara but it would make sense that she received a greek key tiara after marrying prince andrew of greece and denmark in 1903 so it could have the origins in 1903 the tiara is made of diamonds and the greek key design is punctuated by a central laurel reef element and two honeysuckle elements the design suggests an early 20th century creation and indeed jeffrey munn argues that the tiara was made around the turn of the century in France, perhaps by Cartier. Well, I do wish that this one <laughs> uh, was made by Cartier. But no, it is absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to wear that one too. Oh, I'm so excited. We've got two more to go. So I'm going to save what looks like the biggest box until last. I know my hair is getting messed up, but never mind. It's tiara hair. It's a curse of tiara hair. I don't know how the royal women do it. I really don't. Ooh. What's this one going to be? Oh, oh, yay. I know what this one is. Can you guess what it is? It's the Tech Tiara. So the Duchess of Tech. Now this one, we haven't seen in royal use for a very long time. In fact, I can't even remember the last person who, who actually wore this, uh, but it's this beautiful design. I actually thought that this would have been really good um, for Catherine, now the Princess of Wales's wedding day. Uh, because, but and I like the height in it as well. It really is absolutely gorgeous. Just look at that design. So I'm going to pop this on. I mean, again, oh, this is quite a wide one. This is quite wide because all the others are a little bit narrow. Um, so this definitely, because I've only got a small head. So this, as you can see, <laughs> is quite big. Um, so this is quite a big wide. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to squish that in a bit. The elastic will definitely help. Uh, but at the moment, that is actually a bit too big on me. Um, I mean, it probably works better as a bandeau. Um, a little bit too big on me, actually. If I can try and shape these in just a little bit, and with the elastic, I think that will fit. Mary Adelaide often wore the tiara with two extra rows of diamonds at its base. The tiara exists today as a row of 20 diamond crescents, hugging three diamond set roses with a slim band of diamonds at its base. The crescents on the tiara can actually be worn facing either backwards or forwards, and these are photos of its wearers sporting it both ways. And finally, we come to what looks like the biggest, and I think you're going to recognise this one the most. Um, I definitely think it's the most recognisable because it has been worn in recent times by the now Queen Consort Camilla. So let's see if you will recognise it. Uh, yes, it's the Honeycomb Tiara. Wow, I'm so excited. This is one that I have been after for a very, 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 very long time. And it looks like another wide one. So you know, this one is... A little bit bigger of stature and I'm sure you recognize this one this is the honeycomb or or the greville tiara you may know it by either name but 
isn't it gorgeous just look at this <gasps> wow i feel like a magpie yes it's another wide one so i may need to try and bring that in slightly but with the elastic that is going to look really really good i mean just look at that <gasps> wow that is absolutely fantastic the queen mother received the tiara in 1942 when the honorable mrs greville bequeathed her all of her jewelry Diamond and Platinum Tiara was made for Mrs. Greville in 1921 by Lucian Hertz. Uh, and the tiara became one of the Queen Mother's favourite jewels. She wore it throughout her life and eventually bequeathed it to her daughter, the Queen, in 2002. Uh, the Queen never actually wore this tiara in public, but, but she did lease it on long-term loan to the Duchess of Cornwall, now the Queen Consort Camilla. So there you have it, all of all of my new jewels. Uh, I do need to put the elastics on because it does make them feel a lot more safe and secure when they're on your head, especially if you're moving your head around quite a lot. Uh, but I cannot wait. I mean, the back of this one, you can actually still see the jewels. Uh, if it, it's really, really good, and it looks like a really high quality tiara. Um, so yes, I can't wait to wear these. I am so excited. So thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me, to you all, and goodbye.